Sanji has the best character arc in One Piece and I will prove to you why. So I've kind of reached a point where I feel like Sanji is uh, the most controversially discussed character in all of One Piece, which, let's be honest, really says something. I mean, basically every Twitter or Reddit post and every YouTube comment section basically looks like this. <laughs> Except for you. Love you guys. Anyways, even among the dumpster fire that is large parts of the community, the Sanji debate is burning as bright as his passion. Which I guess is part of the issue. And as someone whose favorite character in the story is Zoro, it would be very easy for me to add some more fire to the flame. <laughs> However, if I did that, I honestly would be lying, because to me Sanji is the most well-written character in all of One Piece. Hi, my name is Manu, and even though I don't smoke cigarettes, in this video I will not only prove to you that Sanji will leave Wano as a changed man, but also clear his, and in extension I guess Oda's name, of being a bad writer when it comes to the man with the curly hair. His eyebrows. My original relationship with Sanji is probably similar to yours. Pre time skip Sanji was an absolute fantastic character. He was not only a true gentleman, but arguably the most mature member of the crew, scolding Luffy for inappropriate behavior, protecting the weaker members of the crew, and even his chivalry had more of an old school James Bond sort of vibe. Oh, smart, during that time, deciding who was my favorite between him, Zoro, and Luffy was practically impossible and also unnecessary. There was a great balance between the three who had very different views, yes, but nonetheless respected each other, protected the crew together, and genuinely deserved the title of the Monster Trio. I guess some people might already have been uncomfortable with Sanji's outdated views on women, but it was clearly nothing compared to after the time skip. Look, I'm sugarcoated. Sanji has been extremely useless and even worse than that, annoying ever since the Straw Hats left for Fishman Island. Through Punk Hazard, Dressrosa, and Zo, while Zoro and Luffy were getting stronger and stronger, reaching their full potential, Sanji often failed to win an important fight and in many situations was just cringy to watch for his nosebleed horniness. And at that point, I fully agreed with the people who thought that Oda had ruined Sanji's great potential by making him an annoying and useless joke character. With Whole Cake Island, however, I was completely shocked but mostly relieved to find out that this pitiful version of Sanji I had seen since Fishman Island had actually been part of one of the best character arcs I have ever come across. <laughs> And the recent developments in Wano have now completely evaporated my remaining doubts, so I can say with full confidence that Sanji has not been ruined. Just the opposite. I believe Oda's betrayal of our cook, including his over-the-top perviness, has been very much on purpose and will make his growth just the more impactful once it is complete. One of the fundamental tools for great storytelling and creating a strong main character is the so-called hero's journey that you can see here on the top rechts. And since all of the straw hats are designed as main characters of their own, this can be applied to each and every one of them, which actually would probably be pretty interesting to do. Maybe I should make a series about that. The first step in the hero's journey is the call to adventure. And Sanji's adventure starts in the most heartbreaking way possible. He has to run away from his unloving family that has physically and mentally abused him ever since his mother died. Getting this piece of backstory was the first real mindfuck moment I had during Whole Cake Island that gave so much more context to his character. <laughs> The second step is meeting a mentor. 
For Sanji, this person is of course Zeph, and again he has another traumatizing experience, almost starving to death on an island. However, other than his family, Zeph actually shows love for Sanji and is prepared to die for him. He's the first person since his mother that treats Sanji like a human being and becomes his new family, teaching him about cooking and what it means to be a decent person. Most importantly, however, he gives Sanji his dream, which is to subscribe to Ohara's channel channel to get his weekly fix of next generation anime content. That and also finding the all blue. This is where Luffy comes into play. He recruits Sanji into his crew and gives him a chance to fulfill his new dream. And so he has now crossed the threshold and has entered the world of pirates. And for a while he overcomes his trials pretty easily. With Mr. Prince and his lobby and his willingness to take Luffy's pain on Thriller Bark, Sanji's popularity was at an all-time high. Okay. <laughs> And then the first big failure, Sabaody. However, here it's the crew as a collective, or arguably even Luffy as a captain, that fails here. And so, alongside everyone else, Sanji grows from this experience and develops new skills over the time skip, which is exactly where Sanji's downfall in popularity starts. How could that happen? Well, will you look at that? It coincides perfectly with the lowest point of the hero's journey death and rebirth. As I summarized earlier, Sanji comes out of the time skip massively flawed. While his ratio of coolness to pervert was maybe something like 80-20 before the time skip, to me it had shifted to something closer to 90-10 on the pervy end. And I gotta be honest, of course that would override all the good associations we have made with him before. And even more frustrating, he was basically of no use to the crew anymore. This negative spiral keeps speeding up until finally we hit rock bottom with Whole Cake Island, where Sanji not only only leaves the crew, but even disrespects and hurts his captain. He is reunited with his abusive family, who used him as a pawn for a political marriage, and in the end even has to learn that his to-be-bride pudding, the only ray of hope in all of this, actually had been plotting to murder him and everyone else at the ceremony. You can see how that's Sanji's lowest point in the story so far, right? Many people took this scene as Sanji being heartbroken about Pudding not loving him, but it's actually the culmination of his entire character arc so far literally pouring down on him. And the scene reflects that pretty perfectly. Dark, alone and crying. And this is where everything changes. And so to really appreciate Sanji's radical development from here, you have to understand the main point of Sanji's second backstory with the Windsmokes, that some people for some reason found irrelevant. Because Sanji didn't go from awesome to the state he's in here at Whole Cake Island. You need to understand, this is how Sanji has always seen himself. <laughs> <laughs> right from the start, he had close to no self-worth as a person, which really is no big surprise given his upbringing. I mean, if you got told you were worthless and treated like an animal for the first eight years of your life by your Nazi family, how would you feel? So the baseline is, Sanji is the most self-sacrificial straw hat, which is really impressive given how often one of the straw hats pulls one of these moments. <laughs> But while Luffy risks his life for his dream and Zoro risks his for his principles, Sanji risks his life because he feels indebted to people. And this behavior is actually established right from the start during the Baratie arc where he refuses to leave the restaurant because of his felt debt to Zef, despite literally being fired. <laughs> Oh, 
And just a bit later, he is prepared to let Pearl kill him for the exact same reason. When he offers everything of himself to the women he chases, he really means it. And the same of course goes for the Straw Hats. He would rather be alone and die rather than see his family hurt. The key is that Sanji was born with incredible kindness and altruism. <laughs> His role on the ship is literally taking care of the crew and making sure everyone is healthy and happy. He always fights for the weak. And it's also the reason why Sanji keeps going on his solo missions. He wants to be of use to the crew and take care of things on his own. Which is actually one of the reasons why he gets into fights with Zoro, who fights for everyone in battle, but otherwise spends his time on the ship sleeping and training. So yes, kindness is inarguably Sanji's most important trait. However, combined with his abusive and traumatic childhood, he is not able to extend that love and care to the one person that needs it the most, himself. I think someone compared that to this scene from Fire Force that I found incredibly fitting here as well. And at the same time, I also believe that Sanji's perviness and sexism come from the same good place as well. The only two people who showed him love as a kid were his sister and his mother, who both were dominated by his father and brothers. So no wonder he would put a woman on a pedestal and see them as something beautiful that needs protection from men. And the second half of his life, he then grew up in a family of only dudes, all of them tough guy sailors, so of course he would get that extra portion of macho with that as well. When you really think about it, Sanji grew up on sea his entire life. In a way, he is the most piratey crew member. Well, except Jimbei, he literally lives in the ocean. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Jimbei! And don't forget that Sanji spent two years on Okama Island, chased around 24-7, which is literally the reason why Oda made him go overboard with all the intolerable nosebleed stuff after the time skip. And with that knowledge, going back to the rainy night on Whole Cake Island, Sanji's insecurity and lack of self-worth have pulled him to rock bottom. His perviness is not charming anymore, but annoying. His solo missions aren't successful anymore, but a burden. He has disrespected his crew and captain only to find out it was all for nothing. And as the crowning pile of shit on top, he's back with the ungrateful, emotionless family that caused this entire mess in the first place. <laughs> And looking at our chart, it is here that Sanji finally has his first big revelation. He finally understands that going off on his own was a mistake, that there are women out there who would exploit his chivalry, that he disrespected Luffy and that his desire to save people on his own is actually a burden on those he cares for. But maybe the most heartbreaking thing is that he finally understands that Luffy and the others came to save him, that he was not dispensable, that they cared so much for him that they would declare war on a Yonko. Sanji cares so so much about the people he's close to, both the Straw Hats and Zeph, but it doesn't seem to occur to him that they care about him just as much. What really broke my heart is that he's genuinely surprised when Luffy bombs into Whole Cake Island to rescue him, even though literally anyone could have predicted that in a heartbeat. I mean, Sanji has witnessed Luffy go through hell and back for Nami, Robin, Vivi and Ace, for Ace actually multiple times I guess, and he still doesn't expect that he's worth the same level of concern. Until that moment, where he sees Luffy starving and beaten, waiting at the very spot he promised he would wait. Whole Cake Island was Sanji's arc because he finally realizes his flaws. Just as Luffy did with Robin, Nami and Usopp, he makes Sanji shout out his true feelings to him and liberates him from his emotional prison. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> 
Luffy and the others love him for who he is, and so Sanji saves the day in Whole Kick Island by being the kind person that he actually is, winning over Pudding's heart, saving his family, and even baking the cake to stop Big Mom's rage and save all of his enemies. And this phase of growth has carried all the way over to Wano. Spoiler alert from here on out, by the way. One of my favorite moments during the raid so far has been Sanji calling Robin for help when captured by Black Maria. Trusting Robin to fight Black Maria while holding on to his values means he now thinks of Robin as a strong and reliable person instead of a damsel in distress that needs to be saved and kept out of danger. He swallowed his pride and asked a woman to save him, even though he always has been the one saving women throughout the series. And I realized that this scene stands in direct contrast to his standoff with Khalifa on Ennis Lobby where he refused to trust in Nami. I mean, just look how grateful Robin is for this gesture. She's beaming, and Marco gets it too. So now Sanji is getting his long-awaited fight with Queen. However, the issue of self-worth still remains. While he has overcome the trauma of his upbringing in Whole Cake Island, he still detests his family, and now that his own Vinsmoke abilities have awakened, he feels disgusted and is scared to lose his emotions. Even though Luffy told him to his face that he needs the kind Sanji, he now is wondering whether Luffy might not prefer a heartless machine to fight for him. And so what Sanji now needs to realize is that his powers are already the opposite of Jerma. Queen said that Judge wanted his kids to have hearts of ice, but who stopped his plans? Sanji's mother Sora, who sacrificed herself and gave Sanji a burning heart of kindness, the exact opposite to Judge's plans. With this panel during the wedding, many readers only see Sanji saving his family, but I see Sanji and his mother saving them all with Sanji's burning heart. A really nice nod to this is actually Sanji's slider that looks suspiciously like his mother giving him fire. By the way, there's actually a real world version of this slider that was made as a special collaboration where only about a thousand of these were made, and I really need to get my hands on one of these. The next really huge step in his development that I think people kind of overlooked in this recent chapter is that Sanji chose to destroy his raid suit. That was a power I guess people disliked to begin with. As it turns out, Oda only meant it to be a catalyst for Sanji's true power-up. However, much more importantly, with this Sanji also starts to overcome his arguably worst trait of them all. His perviness, destroying the one thing his perverted mind always craved for. <laughs> In the end, Sanji will realize that he's actually most successful with women when he is his true, kind and caring self. No matter if it's Viola or Pudding, Sanji is starting to understand that true chivalry is much closer to the cool and caring spy hero side of him that we all fell in love with to begin with. And in a more metaphoric sense, by destroying the raid suit, he literally chooses not to hide anymore, but be the crewmate that Luffy needs by embracing who he is at heart. Which is exactly what is gonna happen by the time Wano is over. But, and I think this is very important, he still has to atone for what he did on Whole Cake Island, especially in front of Zoro. And speaking of Zoro, if you want a deeper understanding of his character, I strongly encourage you to watch my analysis on him, 